Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and I'm really excited today to be checking out a recent Kickstarter delivery called Post Human Saga. This comes from Mighty Boards. Been looking forward to this for quite some time. It's the deluxe edition as it states right on the box. This is an insert that slides over top of two boxes that it comes with, one with the game itself. We'll be going over that in a second. And then later unboxing this deluxe components box down below. Now in terms of Kickstarter content, there could be Kickstarter specific or exclusive content in both of these boxes, but I can tell you right now, it's for sure in the deluxe components, unsure currently on this box. We'll have to take a look and find out as we go, but again, do your research. If you're looking at picking this thing up, we'll retail later on down the line, if it comes out in that capacity, currently the Kickstarter is the only way I know in which this could be picked up. I could be wrong, there could already be an announcement for the retail version, we shall see, but there is a solo mode built into this game which I was excited about and on the channel itself I haven't covered in terms of an unboxing of a game a post-apocalyptic game really since Fallout the board game which was released quite some time ago so excited to check out another game in that sort of world so without further ado let's check out Post Human Saga. Post Human Saga is a competitive tactical survival adventure set in the post-apocalyptic world of Post Human. The game can be played in three modes, solo, two to four players competitive or team versus. It combines Euro mechanics with finely crafted story to create an experience that will challenge your system busting skills while immersing you in a rich post-apocalyptic world. It's got features listed right here, tightly woven theme and mechanics, a sandbox experience where no two games are alike, three game modes as we already went over, many different hero builds allowing for different play styles, stories featuring the quirks of human and mutant nature in a gritty post-apocalyptic world, and deep world building and lore. Up in the top right hand corner of the back of the box insert, you can see it talks about deluxe components. Again, I expect to find these in that deluxe box. We'll take a look at it later on. There's supposed to be a fortress model inside of it, which is going to make the center of the game board a little bit more immersive and cool looking. You've got 64 scavenge site tokens, 20 food tokens, 20 ammo tokens, med tokens, book tokens, booze tokens, one post human dice bag. So all kinds of stuff to really just kind of deluxify the game and just again take the component levels from tokens to much nicer looking components. The very first thing you're going to see when you open up the box is the Mighty Boards Games Catalog for 2019 to 2020. It's going to show off a couple games. You can see a new Honey Bee expansion for this particular game. I've actually never seen or played this particular game. Maybe some of you out there have. But the one you might be more interested in is the one we're talking about right now because down near the bottom here, you're going to notice it says right here, new expansion coming in 2020 to Kickstarter. So for those of you that might be intrigued by this game after seeing this unboxing or playthroughs or anything else you may see content wise for post human you're going to have it appears another opportunity to pick this thing up in the future so keep your eyes out for that and again it's got some information on some of the boxes that have been released thus far like the resistance expansion the wanderer hero pack the outcast promo pack some extra dice and the deluxe components we'll talk about later on this video if we go ahead and flip this thing to the very back, it also talks about some other games that they developed and have published out there, and a couple of these I absolutely recognize. All right, let's go over the rulebook quite quickly, as you guys can't obviously read this through the unboxing, but the rulebook's gonna have, of course, a nice little synopsis of what's going on. The table of contents are laid out like so. We'll go over the number of pages to this thing in a second. I'll just move this over to the side so we can flip through. You can get a feel for the layout of this rulebook. So here is, the game content section all laid out so you can be sure you have everything. This spills over to the second page. You got your pre-game organization right here, common components down here. Again, there appears to be, it's a larger rule book in terms of its size, it fits the size of the box. The font size is actually a little small on some of this stuff up here, would have been nicer to see it go up a bit. For me, I'm okay, I'm still young, I can see that stuff. But for some of you that have a tougher time, it might be a little small, but this font is the right size. I just think this stuff right here might be a little tough, especially it looks like it's in italics as well, which can't help things. 
But going into the rule book itself and the actual rules, everything looks to be nice and easily able to be read. Large font there to see. The common setup right here, listed on the far left, you got the character board, anatomy broken out. You got a nice breakdown of what you're looking at on each of these boards. You got, well, that's kind of cool. Pegs are going into the board. The huge open world map, which again, they said sandbox. So this thing is gonna have all kinds of things to throw at you that you're not gonna expect. Looks like game setup goes through about one down to 12 steps. That's not bad at all. You're gonna have mutations, weapons, and equipment and followers, all the things you'd expect to have when out in the post-apocalyptic world. Player setup showing you how to set that up. So this hopefully is giving you a rough idea as to how the game, uh, the rule book itself looks and flows because I know there are some people out there that just based on the rule book alone, they will actually uh, jump right past the game or because they love the rule book so much they'll actually be more intrigued by it so even though i don't focus my entire unboxing on it i like flipping a couple pages to give you guys a rough idea of how they went about explaining the rules because honestly learning the game is a big big part of the experience and i really think from what i'm seeing here this is something that's definitely consumable and does not appear to be hard to pick up the visuals of the actual graphics and the cards all very large and easy to see and they've also pinpointed all things out with numbers making it even easier to understand so that's basically the gist of the rule book we'll flip to the back really quick to get an idea we've got of course the icon glossary back here which is a huge help in any game it comes with a total of 28 pages for the rule book let's move on now when we move into post-human saga stories 1 through 70 the risk that i'm running into here is of course spoilers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you guys the very first page of this and that's probably about it unless of course it doesn't give you enough of what I'd like to show you this is the first time I'm seeing it as well so we'll go ahead and just open this up see what the first couple pages has in store for us okay so this looks pretty safe to start us off here we just have our introductory story in a backstory so again very nice to see that they're kind of setting the tone for the game by actually giving you some nice narration as to why and what's going on here Moving right along, we actually get into a breakdown of the actual uh, book itself and how it's gonna be structured. So this is a perfect example, and I'll, I'll go no further than this, of how this particular stories book is laid out. So we have different stories, like up here is No Human, uh, The Chanter's Cave, Get a Lobe of This, Starman, and you can see there's different things going on here in terms of iconography, you're getting checkpoints and XP and extra followers for different things that are going on, depending on how the stories are breaking out. So again, you don't want to go through this in a video because there's a lot of special stuff to see as you play through the game. But hopefully, even though that's a very, very generalized view of this book, you get a rough idea of what to expect inside this book. And you gotta love this. The next thing that I see in the box has the word solo on it. It says solo mission side A. And if you flip it over to the opposite side, you've got solo mission side B. So already we're starting to see solo content inside the box. Next up, we have token punch boards to go through. You can see the artwork on the actual locations themselves is very comic based. It's very hand drawn and animated. It looks really cool actually and very gritty, which I I like quite a bit for this particular theme. So I'll give you a nice up close view of this artwork. You can see it's very, very cool. There's lots of detail and it's very, it's very much from a high bird's eye view, basically down to the ground. So if you can actually see this very close up, you can see the individual cars on the ground and things like that. So that's kind of the height that we're talking about that this stuff is drawn from. Very, very much a big world looking down. Uh, you've got tokens here for a number of different things, but remember, as I talked about earlier, if you've got the deluxe components, I think a lot of these regular tokens are gonna be switched out with the fancier tokens. So we're gonna move past these to the next punch board. You can see we have some outdoor areas here, lots of green. We also have a whole bunch of what looks to be character-based tokens as well down here, all kinds of them. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over so you can actually see the back of these as well because I didn't do that for the first one. So you can see the different location token piles will have kind of a map compass look to the back of them. And this is what it looks like on the back. You got what looks to be kind of a refresh for some of the tokens. Very, very interesting. Moving right along again, you can see the train is changing on each of these, which is cool because you're gonna be exploring different areas. They're gonna have different aspects you're gonna to have to deal with. Again, a whole slew of more tokens. Lots to explore in this one. 
And moving right along here, wow, check that out. That's pretty cool. Some very desolate areas right there. Looks like farmland that probably isn't doing so hot based on the apocalyptic nature of this particular game. Got some more tokens to deal with as well. I'll give you guys a nice up close view of those locations. And maybe just so you guys can actually see, I'll give you an up close view of the last couple that I did because you didn't actually get to see them up close and see that detail. So here are the mountains. And then the one before that was uh, kind of a forest or wilderness based tile. Uh, so I'll give you a nice shot of those as well so you can see them up close. I think seeing some of the locations during the video really helps to give you an idea of what to expect you because you're going to be looking at this stuff as you play through the game. So you definitely want to like the art style and the visuals of the game. So another whole token board. Look at this one. This one's all specific to story events would be my guess as it runs 1 through 67. If I flip this over to the opposite side, that's what it looks like on the back. But yes, these are definitely tokens that look like they involve or have tie-ins to that storybook. Here is a look at the game board all laid out. We're going to take a closer look at each of the different areas of this board. Of course, right now it doesn't look like much is going on, but you have all these predefined grid locations all over the board, as well as the fortress area in the middle. On the board itself, we also have a really nice reminder of the round order that talks about the morning, the day, and and the night. The board also has spots for player order one through four, as well as rounds and the events and other effects that might happen at specific rounds. Speaking of events, there's actually a slot on the board for those. Recon objectives are also slotted in on the main board. Your victory track is also captured here. And finally, your mission victory points. Moving right along to the inside of the box, down to the tray that comes inside the game itself, we have a number of components to go through. The game comes with two different bags for organization and likely for the drawing of specific tokens, a large number of Ziploc type bags to organize the game pieces. There are 28 marker pegs in four different colors. The game comes with a number of wooden cubes in black and red. The black ones are boost cubes and the red ones are counter cubes. The game also comes with some very high quality dice. There is a total of 12 of them, two for six different types. There are four character boards inside the box and you'll also notice there are punch outs for those peg markers to be slotted inside. Posthuman includes five miniatures that are for the characters played in the game. So I'll give you a close up of each of these as well as give you a nice 360 of all of them so you can see the detail from all sides. If you're planning to paint this, that could be pretty valuable for you. I would definitely say that this individual likes to do things from range, being that he's got himself a scope on that rifle and binoculars. We'll give you a full 360 of this individual. He's also carrying some gear with him. Total polar opposite to the character we just saw. This one has a machete, likes to get up close and personal, it seems. Another character to choose from that looks like they like to be up close and personal with what appears to be either a wooden board or a bat with some nails or spikes sticking out of it. So that definitely has Lucille vibes to it. And another individual with a machete here. We'll go ahead and rotate him around. All right, time to check out some of the cards inside the box. We got Combat Encounters. This is more of a reference card from my understanding. There's a couple of these. Flip over to the opposite side. You got a general reference here for movement and marching. The enemy dice types, so you can break down for those. You've got yourself stat challenges, recovery points, and what happens when you're knocked out. A couple of those for reference. Next, we move to bosses, of which it appears there are four. Let's flip them over and take a look at them. So we have a mutant boss here that we'd be having to deal with. Another mutant boss. I wouldn't be surprised if all of these are mutant bosses. Yep. And they're not looking like they're going to be easy either. That guy is absolutely massive. Next up, we're going to talk about the eight different mission objective cards that come inside of this box. So here's the first one. A nice little blurb down here in bold describing it if you want to read that. 
Feel free to pause the screen in order to actually consume each of these as there's quite a bit going on in each of them. Again, the artwork here is a lot more visible and looks really, really good. I love the artistic style of it. Got a seed vault for this mission objective. Those are looking pretty cool. Some caves here. The zoo. Yeah, the artwork I'm really digging. I really like it a lot. And then Forever Santa. Okay, it's time to go through a big deck of cards here, one by one. I'll try my best not to drop any. Again, pause the screen if you want to actually check out some of the artwork or even some of the abilities on any of these cards. I won't be able to speak to exactly what you're seeing, except some of the obvious ones, like these are characters. And then when we flip these over here, you can get an idea of what you can expect in the back. So we got all kinds of things going on here. We got Trek cards, map cards, camp cards forage and it seems to go in that order with all kinds of icons that we'll have to learn in order to understand the game better all right now we're moving into landmarks so we got a hunting stand here got some of the nice artwork coming through communications a clinic a bunker a workshop this is looking pretty cool. I'm going to try to keep my thumb down to the bottom left so you guys can see the abilities in full. Trucking Depot. I really like the artwork. It's so good. I'm going to say that a lot because that's one of the things that drew me to this game when I first saw it on Kickstarter was I just loved it. I loved the artwork. It was so, so good. Um, heavy Rain. So these are some major events that can happen from the event deck that sits on the main game board. Of course, you got all kinds of weather effects, but there's other things that can happen besides just weather that are going to cause you some fun. Perfect day. That sounds nice. Here we have some mission VIPs for three to four players. Flipping this over. And then we've got uh, two players, Team Versus. These are recon objectives for three to four players. Again, lots of uh, icons here to become familiar with, but some wording underneath of them as well. Batteries, lab, that type of thing, letting you know exactly what's going on. Oh, these ones are getting into solo cards here. So these ones are really important for individuals on the channel, so I'll give you a little more pause on those ones. But again, lots of iconography, so you're going to have to learn what those all entail. Flipping it over to the back, that's what it looks like. Next here we have what looks to be story-based cards, I'm not too sure. This could also be events. Most of these are just lots of flavor text, which I like, because it's going to give you some backstory, some reasoning as to what's really going on in this world, and to drive you further into the game. Looks like they put a lot of effort into these as well. Next up, it looks like we'll be taking a look at some of the foes that we could find in the wastelands. This deck is actually quite large, so I'm going to go ahead and split this up, and we'll take a look at the back half in a second here. So we have some wild dogs. I'll do my best to try to avoid... Uh, blocking any of the text on the cards, but uh, that might be difficult with the uh, placement of the art and the icons here. We've got all kinds of stuff going on here. We got ga urban gangers, which don't sound too fun. Doomsayers, a bunch of them. Hoarders. These are human enemies. Twitchy, these are now mutant enemies we can run into. Oh wow, man shield. This thing is huge. Does not look fun. A spitter. That sounds bad. Big head trapper. All right, that's for the first pile here. Let's go into the second. The hammer hand. Three of them. The listener, this one's just listening to see if they can hear you. Ganger, another human enemy. Master Hoarder. Scalper, that's not good. Ultra Violent, wow, okay. 
these none of these guys you really want to run into. Seeker. You got the wild one. Again, the art from the actual game in terms of the locations, plus what you can see in the actual enemies here I'm going through, all carries over, looks the same, is very uniform, so I love that. Tackler. We got Pinhead. Whisperer. And that's going to do it for that entire deck. All right, next we're going to go over some of the cards that are very specific to the type of characters you can control in the game. So what you're looking at right now is what's considered to be challenge cards. There's a number of them for each of the characters in the game. So again, they'll make more sense once you understand the iconography, but essentially these are cards you're trying to achieve or complete for your particular character, of which there are a bunch, which will give you upgrades and things like that. Pretty cool. Moving on to the yellow cards, these are just straight up skill cards for your character. And again, they're specific to your character based on the back. So we're gonna see those for each of a number of different characters when I go through the rest of them in a second. This will just give you a nice overview of what you're actually looking at. Again, if you wanna pause the screen to read any of these, feel free to do so. Here we have our close combat weapon as well as our ranged weapon for that one character. Again, very easy to distinguish those so you can see the stats for both. Now that you know the rough rundown, we're going to go through all the rest of the characters that are in here. So this one's going to be pertaining to this individual right here, going through all of their particular cards. Solid hit, frontal attack. Again, they're going to have different things, different challenges to go after, and their skill cards are going to be different as well. So you get a skill upgrade, you can see it translates over to the yellow cards here. So you've got all these different skills for this particular character. It's going to, again, what's going to be uh, mainly talked about on the back of the box about the different builds of each of the characters are going to come from these skill cards, uh, depending on how you build out your character. And you got yourself your weapons as well for each one. Next character is this one right here. So I'll move these cards out of the way. We'll head into the next character. Maintaining distance, critical shot, dodging, hack and slash, frontal attack, critical strike, crack shot, flurry of blows, acrobats, feed spoke, feed, uh, sorry, speed focus, quick healer, counter attack, all kinds of different skills for this individual. There is the reinforced bat I was talking about earlier, and we got ourselves a nice pistol as well. Moving on to the next individual in line. Challenge cards for him. And the skills. See, he's got himself a hatchet as well as another pistol for him. And last but not least, this character right here. Penetrating hit, perfect shot. Some of them look like they're the same, some of them are different. Planned moves, sneak attack, those are different. Meditate, trapping, defensive stance, shooting focus. Bunch of different cool looking ones in here too. Be very interesting to play each of these characters, see what their differences are. That one starts off with a pistol as well. Now we get into some of the other weapons inside the game. We got things like the hand axe here. Another hand axe. We got heavy swords, a fire axe, nail clubs, pickaxe, spear, sledgehammer, an impaler, sheet blade, parrying blade. Oh my goodness, that looks pretty vicious. Machetes, the saw axe, that's brutal. Katana, and now we're getting into some ranged weapons here. Nice, the 45, some pretty good looking guns here. The M5, the Reaver. Got some, oh, those are so nice. DMR, looks like there's two of each of them. Model 10. Little Belcher. There's your long-ranged rifle. Ooh, even better, Marksman. And the Gutter. And of course, in this game, you're gonna find some equipment to use, like the Vaccine Pump. Number of those, you're gonna probably need those to get rid of mutation cards, as it mentions. Backpacks to store additional items. Medicine kits. 
a guitar for playing music, for camp, for recovering, binoculars for seeing distance, hiking gear, weapon upgrade kits, scavenge site map, that's handy, terrain map overall, that's also probably pretty handy, a compass, flashlight, some musical instruments, camo gear, that's pretty huge, and a doll. Last but not least for the core box here, we have some follower cards and then we're gonna go into some mutation cards. So I'll try to go through these fairly quickly. Different followers that we can actually obtain, I, I assume, or maybe even meet out in the wastelands. Got a girl there, some a guru, a nurse, always good to find a nurse out there, philosopher. A researcher, a rock star, scout leader, tattoo artist. All right, now we're getting into the mutation cards. They look like this on the back. And you'll remember from the event track, actually, uh, when it went through the round, sorry, the round tracker had this symbol as well. So you know mutations are a big part of this game. Uh, probably not going to be all that great. So we got bent spine. Yikes, that does not seem good. Uh, twitchy spasms also doesn't seem good. Pure... Whoa, that's, that's pretty crazy. Spitter stench, ugh. Skin and bones, not good. Listener sensitivity, some of these are actually directly related. These are minor mutations to the individuals or maybe the enemies can do these things to you. Frail, these are major mutations, becoming very frail, wow. Shrunken, oh, I can't even pronounce that, hippocampus. Pinhead Brain, Thick Skull, Big Head Constitution, sorry about the bottom there, I'll give you a second to actually read that one, Scatterbrained, and Whisperer's Mind. So that is going to do it for the core box experience for a post-human saga. I'm also really excited to show you the deluxe components box as well, so let's dive into that next. All right, as province, we're gonna move right into the deluxe components box. And the first thing that struck me as being really nice is the fact that this is actually magnetically sealed, which is quite nice. Usually these extra Kickstarter on edition boxes are typically not that great, usually throwaway boxes. This is one I'd like to keep. So going ahead and opening this thing up, it appears the first thing you will see, besides some instructions at the top of the box, which are off screen right now, just giving ideas to how to actually place the components inside this box, and the contents inside, we're seeing the fortress. And of course, it's gonna give you instructions on these punch boards as to how to go ahead and make this fortress. So you can have something standing up right in the middle of the game itself. Flipping this over to the opposite side, I'll give you a view of this side of the punch board. Then we'll move right along to the next one here. This again is definitely going to make things look cooler. So it's certainly not a must have, but it certainly will add to the game. And then underneath here is what's really cool. Now everything has its place. Currently everything's sitting up in the top. Right now, what you can expect to find in here is this post-human specific dice bag. So that's really nice because I do have an extra set of dice. So I have more dice than the original core box can support. So putting them all in there is gonna be handy. We'll start off with these tokens. There's a bunch of booze tokens in the game. You'll notice that half the token is completely flat, which is very smart because as you've seen in prior games, I believe a really good example would be like Everdell, for instance, when they originally released the logs, they were able to roll and some of them would roll right off the table and a bottle certainly would roll off the table. So a lot of companies now are doing kind of a half and half thing where they do half the visual and the other side is flat so that those circular type of components don't go disappearing on you. So you've got your booze covered with these tokens. Next up, you have a bunch of book tokens. You can even see the spine of the book right there, as well as a bunch of what the books look like on the front. Of course, you could paint these if you really wanted to, but it's nice to have these deluxe components. Here is what the med tokens look like. You can see it essentially looks like a pill, basically with a heart on it, and again, a flat side to ensure they don't go rolling around. Here we have a number of ammo tokens. These are pretty self-explanatory, again, with a flat side on one side of them. Here we have the food tokens. Again, they kind of look like a tin can and flat on the opposite side. 
This miniature right here is called the Mary Jane Doll miniature. And again, maybe it isn't a first player marker because it's absolutely tiny, but I'm guessing that potentially maybe the card that's in the game is extremely powerful. I don't know. And lastly, there's 64 scavenge site tokens, and there's a number of them for each of these four that you're seeing in my hand. Again, these are very nice quality. You can hear them right there. And if you flip them over to the opposite side, you can see that the binoculars are engraved on the opposite side to keep things hidden. As I mentioned, there's 64 of them, so there's quite a bit. And that's going to conclude the unboxing for Post-Human Saga. This covers the core box experience as well as the deluxe components that came as part of the Kickstarter. I really hope this helps you make an informed decision on whether this is a game that might interest you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on rolling solo.